Lord Jesus, may your spirit lead in this presentation. We plead with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Greetings, my brothers and sisters. My name is Kuza, your host. This is the Herald Report Ministry. May the Lord truly bless you wherever you are joining us from. And today, I want to focus on tips to survive the coming challenges. We're looking at the monitoring of the transaction, monitoring of the movements, and the Pope himself attending the G7 to discuss about artificial intelligence. It's important, brothers and sisters, that we understand that we are living in the last days. Nothing will be left and prepared to ensure that the mark of the beast will sail through. Everything will be watertight. The control systems will be put in place. And as you are going to see shortly that the Pope himself is going to attend the G7 summit to discuss about the artificial intelligence. How is he involved in this? Is this something to do with worship or is something else? So now before, without wasting time, let's actually go to the headline to uh, this was on the 16th of April 2024. He says the U.S. isn't just author reauthorizing its surveillance laws. It's vastly expanding them. So what are these surveillance laws all about? The U.S. House of Representatives agreed to reintroduce, reauthorize, yes, reauthorize a controversial spying law known as the 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act last Friday without any meaningful reforms. Dashing hopes that Congress might finally put a stop to intelligence agencies, warrantless surveillance of Americans' emails, texts, and phone calls. Brothers and sisters, you need to understand that, you know, America is very good in spying. They spy all over. Whatever they think of spying, whatever they think of spying, they just spy. They've got their instruments all over the world. They spy. Now look, follow the next paragraph. Section 702 is the current form. In, in its current form, allows the government to compel communication giants like Google and Verizon to turn over information. So basically, because of the section 702, you cannot deny with information. You cannot refuse information. If they want to spy on someone, they can ask Google to give them information and that will actually happen. Now it says, the, the, the red words at the bottom, that means anyone with access to Wi-Fi router, server, or even phone, anyone from a landlord to a land roamer, could be required to help the government spy. Oh yes, you cannot deny, you cannot run away with information. You are left without a choice. Everything will be monitored. They will access information whenever they want. So there is no place to hide. It actually means that they will control the flow of information. There are things which they will allow you to say. There are things that will not allow you to say. They are pre the message. There are messages that may be deemed inappropriate to preach. So they are going to uh, uh, to. Uh, they are going to stop or they are going to block all that. You can be censured or blocked at any time. Now, this is exactly what is happening in America is the world of spying. But now let's actually go to what is happening in England because uh, in the United Kingdom, it's very interesting. It says government's new bank spying powers breach privacy rights warn lawyers. So the government's proposal uh, propose mass bank spying powers are highly likely to breach the public right to privacy. So why do they want to spy? What are they hoping to achieve in spying? What exactly is the meaning of this? Now, let's actually follow this clip from Redacted. I found this very interesting. Follow this well, are clip. Are governments using new special powers to comb through your bank accounts, look at where you've been spending your money? Well, Every transaction that you make will now be monitored by the government. That appears to be the case. That's exactly what the British government is trying to do, giving itself sweeping powers to secretly monitor your bank accounts. So this is the this is what they're saying. Definitely this bill will be passed or is being passed. Now, what is the actual reason for surveillance? Why would they want to monitor our bank accounts? Why would they want to monitor how we spend our money? What exactly does that mean? Now, let's actually listen to the explanation because the explanation is very good. I've taken all this from Redacted. You can actually see uh, that you can actually follow the link and watch the full video on the bottom. So now look at this. 
So can you educate us on exactly what the UK is trying to do here with bank accounts? And do you think that this will pass? Yes, the government has essentially snuck in these sweeping powers into a really unrelated bill on data, um, whereby they will be able to force banks to continuously and repeatedly search bank accounts for what they call indicators of potential fraud and error. So um, there's not even a crime threshold. There's no suspicion threshold. Um, it's partly administrative because they're looking for errors in the administration of welfare and benefits, including the state's own errors. Really nothing like this has ever come before. And in fact, it won't even stop at banks because this extraordinary financial snoopers charter is aimed at third party organizations. So initially, it's going to be banks and building societies. But the people that I've spoken to in the government in formal meetings have said that they're interested in extending this to places like online marketplaces, eBay, and so on. So that essentially any online account that you have could be within the crosshairs of financial state backed surveillance. So this is where we are at the moment. After they've finished dealing with the banks, they will go to the online accounts uh, like PayPal, like many other online where there's a lot of money movement. They would want to know how much you are spending. They would not want to know where you are, but what you are buying. The, the question is, what are they going to achieve in return? What would this entail? Now, it's actually very interesting. If I can actually take you to the same paper, which I've just read, it says the legal advice warns that new government powers that would see banks forced to scan all customers' accounts in search for welfare fraud or errors, including the state pension and working tax credits, would reveal information about people's movements, opinions, and medical information, and could breach private rights as well as individuals' right to freedom of expression, association, and assembly, and protection from discrimination. Banks would then be required to send unlimited matching account information to the Department of Work and Pension without account holders' knowledge. Oh yes, without your knowledge, without your authorization, they share information. You may think that you are not known. You may think that you are hiding, not knowing that everything about you is very plain and clear to the government and to the systems that are in control. But now what is the implications of your transaction being monitored? As we have learned from the paper, we we'll lose. We may lose our freedom to transact. We may lose our freedom to buy what we want. The state may decide on how we spend our money. And without freedom of transaction, you are definitely a slave. You cannot, you are told what to do and they manage how to do it and they can manage how you spend. You know, I was, um, a few days ago, I wanted to do a transaction. In fact, before I come to that, let me actually uh, transit and actually, let's actually see the move in the Vatican now. This is very interesting. Follow this paper. It says, historic this is historic. Pope Francis to participate in G7 summit and discuss artificial intelligence. So why would the Pope want to go and discuss artificial intelligence? How is he involved in this? Is this anything to do with the gospel? Now he says, uh, I have the honor. This is the prime minister uh, of Italy announcing. I have the honor to announce Pope Francis participation in the proceedings of the G7 in Italy. It is the first time that the pontiff participate in the workings of the group of seven and this can only bring prestige to Italy and the entire G7. What prestige are they going to talk about? What exactly is the main objective? Now follow this. Prime Minister Meloni stated that the Italian government aims to enhance the contribution of the Holy See to the topic of artificial intelligence, particularly with the Rome call for artificial intelligence ethics in 2020 and on the path that leads to concrete application of the concept of algorithmic algorithmic and is to give ethics to the algorithms. So now, what exactly are we talking about when we are talking about the ethics of algorithm? Now, we are talking about the unfair outcome of the process. Now, in the process of monitoring, 
in the process of artificial intelligence, there is quite a lot of things which can go very wrong. The unintended consequences of monitoring people's privacy. Of course, this thing can be hijacked. Many things can happen. Now, the question is, what, why then should they discuss with the Pope? Now, follow the next uh, line. The issue of artificial intelligence, she added, will be the greatest anthropological challenge of this era. A tech a technology that can generate great opportunities but also entails enormous risk in addition to inevitably affecting global balances. Our commitment, she emphasized, is to develop government governance mechanism to ensure that artificial intelligence is centered on and controlled by humans, that is, to keep the person at the center and have the person as the ultimate goal you know brothers and sisters i want us to understand this the artificial intelligence could be a very good thing however the main agenda for the artificial intelligence is very important for us to understand we also need to understand the main player in this because it is through artificial intelligence that everything that we do will be unlocked. You know, I wanted to make a transaction uh, two days ago. I used to, I always make my transaction with my phone. So I'm far away from my bank. My bank is in England and in Zimbabwe. So as I was making a transaction, it was important. I had to make the transaction. And then they say to me, you can't make this transaction without an IRA iris scan for the first time they say you can't make this transaction without an iris scan now the question is uh, what happens when you scan your iris what happens when they scan your iris and this transaction i could not do with the, without an iris scan you know i've avoided use my i've avoided using my iris for a long long time and i try by all means to avoid but i've come to a transaction which i cannot do without an iris scan now the question is what exactly did i do i did something now follow this this was uh from life site this was december 5 2022 and it says uh an international vaccine passport, digital identity, a social credit system, and a central bank digital currency from, form a digital control system that will unlock the population in perpetuity. That will lock down the population in perpetuity. Facial recognition is an essential part of the control structure as it's, as it's the password for your digital identity so brother and sister you find that you know the system will not work without facial recognition and facial recognition is the artificial intelligence and this is where the pope is going to be attending this meeting to discuss this now for what reason follow this artificial intelligence is an absolute crucial component without which the control system cannot work so now if the control system is going to work there is need for artificial intelligence remember this graph you cannot access your health without artificial intelligence neither can you access your finances as i have proved now neither can you communicate neither can you go into smart cities so everything will be centralized on digital identity and this is the function of the artificial intelligence and the control system is centered on this therefore the purpose is attending the meeting which talks about the control system how is he going to use that system as a leader of worship how is he going to use that system now it says uh, as shown in the graph above your digital identity will be required to unlock all aspects of life from logging into the internet to access so services travel food shopping and financial services so now these people are going to implement this system but the one behind the system has to see what is happening in fact the system is designed to add to benefit 
the implementation of the policy of the papacy. No, how is the papacy involved with all these big companies in the G7? You know, Koch says in uh, page 339, the Church of Rome is the largest multinational in the world. Her tentacles spread through nearly all other multinationals as a result of her astral financial investment. This means that she influences that she influences perhaps the majority of the global economics by their cooperation with Babylon. The world's merchants are being enriched and this is how, as predicted in Revelation chapter 13, 17, Babylon will be able to boycott all who do not comply with their with her policies. So if you decide not to scan your iris, it means that... Uh, you will not be able to make those transactions that you want. And what will be the impl implication? The whole system is being controlled by the king of the north, as we learn from Daniel chapter 11. And the king of the north is the papacy himself. And the whole system gives homage to the king of the north. And we are told in the book of Revelation chapter 17 verse 18, these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Now, so the job of the G7 is to give homage to the beast. And as they give homage to the beast, they are to do the biddings of the beast to ensure that they implement the policies of the beast, but the aim of the beast, he, she has nothing to do with this because this is where not where the this is not this is not this is not where the problem is. But the problem is worship. Remember, the power behind the beast is the dragon, and the dragon is fighting those who keep the commandments of God. So, selected messages, book three. Page 392 says, the so-called Christian world is to be the theater of great and decisive actions. Men in authority will enact laws controlling the conscience. After the example of the papacy, Babylon will make all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of a fornication. Every nation will be involved of this time, John the Revelator declares. So every nation will be involved in the great theater, this the, the, the drama would take place within the Christendom. And we are told that they have one mind. And what this mind? They will be a universal bond of union, one great harmony of confederates of certain forces. All shall give their power and strength unto the beast. This is the main, this is manifested. Thus is manifested the same arbitrarily oppressive power against religious liberty, freedom to worship God according to the dictates of conscience, as was manifested by the papacy when in the past it persecuted those who dared to refuse to conform with the religious rites and ceremonies of Romanism. So if you refuse to conform, you are going to lose your rights you lose the rights to transact. If you cannot transact, you cannot travel. If you cannot transact, you cannot eat. If you cannot transact, you cannot pay your rent. Remember, brothers and sisters, everything is centralized. The artificial intelligence will centralize everything. The economy will cent be centralized through the CBDC, as we're going to learn shortly. The social media will be centralized. The social security centralized. All movements monitored and there is no place to hide. And as they are doing this, brothers and sisters, we need to understand that the only thing which they are left to do is the central bank digital currency. And when they have laid down the foundation, when they have laid down the processes, and when the process is now operating well, they will bring the central bank digital currency. And when they have brought the central bank digital currency, then the men of sin is laid the template is one word and the whole world wonders after the beast now follow this uh discussion the reality as the financial system gets more controlling and more invasive it's a little bit like bringing up a corral around us and cbdc's central bank digital currencies and vaccine passports or digital ids are sort of the last 
uh, shutting of the gate. It's hard for many people to imagine the risks here because we're so used to living with financial transaction freedom. And we don't understand that when this gate closes on us, we literally will be sitting in a system where the central banks believe that our assets belong to them and they can dictate where we can spend money and what we can spend money on. I was looking at the update yesterday. Over 90% of the countries in the world are working very hard on the central bank digital currency. And we're going into another phase now. The other phase now is the implementation. And the discussion is that in the next 12, 12 to 24 months, America will also have a digital currency. Now, we have to, the Bible is very clear about the implication of buying and selling, about the implication of the central bank digital currency. Chapter 13, 16 says, He causes all, both rich, small, and great, rich and poor, free and born, to receive in their right hand them, or in their foreheads, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy nor sell, save he that is the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So there is not going to be an operation without the mark of the beast. The question is, what are you going to do? How are we going to survive? That's why we're going to end up talking about the survival tips or what we can do in anticipation with what is, to what is coming. Remember the book Maranatha, page 183, says the time is coming when we cannot sell at any cost, at, at any price. The decree will soon go forth prohibiting men to buy or sell of any man save him that is the mark of the beast. So what is the condition? The mark of the beast. I want to sell mark of the beast. I want to buy mark of the beast. I want to ensure that I've got money in my pocket. Then you need the mark of the beast. So when the control system is in place, brothers and sisters, the devil will implement that which you want. Remember the war is on the commandments of God. It says, in the last great conflict of the controversy, we certain those who are loyal to God will see every earthly support cut off because they refuse to break his law in obedience to the earthly powers and they will be forbidden to buy or sell. How then are you going to survive when you cannot buy or sell? And things are happening very quickly, brothers and sisters. There is a rapidity of the events in the world, as we can see. There is a coordination. What is happening in the United States of America? What is happening in Europe? What is happening in Africa? Everything is being coordinated. And the leaders of this world, they are singing on the same page. It says, in the warfare to be waged in the last days, they will be united in opposition. They will be united in opposition to God's people. All the corrupt powers that have apostatized from allegiance to the law of Jehovah. In this warfare, the Sabbath of the fourth commandment will be the great point of at issue. For in the Sabbath commandment, the great lawgiver identifies himself as the creator of the heavens and the earth. You know, the devil is very interesting. He is willing to destroy everything for the sake of one thing. He will leave no stain unturned to ensure that he will persecute those who keep the Sabbath. So in this great controversy, everything will be prepared in a way that everyone will believe that what we are doing is very good. When in actual fact, the fight, the controversy is on the law of God. And what will happen at last? It is at the time of the national apostasy when acting on the policy of Satan, the rulers of the land will rank themselves on the side of the men of sin. It is then the measure of it is then the measure of guilt is full. The national apostasy is the signal for national ruin. When the law of God has been fully rejected, there is nothing which God can do. And when the national when there is national apostasy, following is the national ruin. Brothers and sisters, everything is being prepared as we can see. These control systems are being put in place. And when they have been put in place, it will be very difficult to do those things which you are able to do today. But now, in anticipation to all this, what should I do as a child of God? Remember 1 Chronicles chapter 12, 32 says, The sons of Issachar knew the times. They had an understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do. 
what should I do as a child of God? Remember, country living, page 10 says, the work of God's people is to prepare for the future events which will soon come upon them with blinding force. So now, how do I prepare for these future events? Brian, sisters, I've learned this and I want to share these four important things with you. Now, the first thing that we need to do as the children of God, as we learn from the book Maranatha, page 208, we must now seek to arm ourselves for the context in which we soon to engage faith in God's word. Prayerfully studied and practically applied will be our shield from Satan's power and will bring us off conquerors through the blood of Christ. So we are called to study the Bible. Last week we discussed about John Wycliffe, the man who translated the Bible from Latin to English. And his desire was to ensure that every person, every person will read the Bible in the language they understand. So, brothers and sisters, study the word. When God reveals the truth to you, practically live the truth that you have received. When you have done that and you live by a thus says the road, you have done all that you are supposed to do. Now, how do you practically apply what you have lived? Be engaged in the preaching of the gospel. Be engaged in preparing others as you are preparing. It is not enough to study the Bible. It is not enough to prayerfully study the Bible. But by the Bible is a practical book which we are to apply practically in our life. What did God say to you? How are you responding? How are you living? Now you ask yourself, what are you doing regarding the mission which Jesus gave us? Gave us? Remember, Jesus came to save, seek and to save those who are lost. And the Holy Spirit is given primarily to help us in the accomplishment of the mission which Jesus gave us. No, how are we then involved in the mission? Brothers and sisters, I actually discovered that... Um, you are not going to be able to complete everything by yourself. As we learned last week, John Wycliffe, while he was preaching at Oxford, but he called some people, he trained them, and he sent them all over England. How are you involved in the mission with others? How are you preaching the gospel? How are you sharing the gospel? What projects are you running? It's very important and critical, brothers and sisters, because it is in the preparation of others that we are also prepared. It is in the preparation of others that we receive the letter rain. So this is central to our victory over sin, involved in the preaching of the gospel. Number two, we need to be people of prayer. How often do you spend all night prayers? How often do you pray and fast? Do you have a program where you claim the promises of God? Because we are told that in the book of uh, Ministry of Healing, page 509, we too must have time set apart for meditation and prayer and for receiving spiritual refresh refreshing. We do not value the power and efficacy of prayer as we should. Prayer and faith will do what no power on earth can accomplish. So if prayer and faith will do what no power on earth can accomplish, how important it is, brothers and sisters, that we may be engaged in prayer and faith, in prayer. And also, as we pray, brothers and sisters, we need to invest quality time in prayer. We need to invest in quality time, not to pray because we have nothing to do, but to pray because we have got something to do. We leave those important things and engage in communicating with God to understand the will of God and to be empowered to do those things which God has called us for to do. Brothers and sisters, remember we are fighting the devil. The enemy that we are fighting is too strong. And this enemy can only be defeated by Jesus Christ. And we need to connect to Jesus Christ. And we need to connect to Jesus Christ through prayer and Bible study. And practically live that which has been revealed. Number three, brothers and sisters, we need to locate ourselves in the right place according to the word of God. Remember, country living, page 9, paragraph 5, said the time is fast coming when the controlling power of the labor unions will be very oppressive. Again and again, the Lord has instructed that our people are to take their families away from the cities 
into the country where they can raise their own provision for in the future the problem of buying and selling will be a very serious one you know brothers and sisters the problem of buying and selling is a very will be a very serious one and it is important that we should have the necessary assets there's nothing as good as having a garden we've uh, showed you pictures of our garden several times so we're going to do that very soon again we need to produce our for ourselves we need to ensure that we have removed ourselves as much as we can from the national greed survive by yourself you know brothers and sisters i'm holding this is some money you know at one point this money had value this was uh 15 dollars another 50 another 50. today this money cannot even buy anything at one point this money could buy more than 10 loaves of bread today this money cannot buy anything what point am i bringing brand sisters i'm saying economy will lose value economy will lose the buying power but if i can produce my essential things i've got my vegetables i've got my garden i've got my home i've got my water system i produce my own electricity it will be easier to survive that way than to depend upon the system and I'm depending on the payment system that when the government pays me or when my employer pays me, I survive. Let me say this to you. It's important for us to work. But as we work, let's prepare for the future. How are you preparing your retirement? How are you preparing for the time when you are not able to survive without working? When you, are, when you, are, when you will not be working, how are you going to survive? When the control system is in place that you cannot work without subscribing to the system that be, how are you going to survive? But brothers and sisters, this is the reason why I said, if we live according to the truth that we have received, we practically apply the truth of the Bible. We practically pray for the guidance of the word of God. God will never leave us alone. That's why the, the book of Daniel chapter 11 makes it very clear that not every place will be affected by the mark of the beast as uh, the way how it will affect other places. will be affected by the mark of the beast differently. And God is able to shield his people. Not every one of us is going to go and live in the countryside. No. Not every one of us is going to be able to survive by himself. No. But God in his mercy and love, he will ensure that he provide for his people in whatever capacity they are in. As long as they live according to the truth which God has revealed unto them and the capacity which God has given them. Brothers and sisters, we need to be practical, as practical as we can. And we need to realize that, you know, there are things that God will allow us to do. But there are things which we are not able to do because of our circumstances. When we have done all that we can, if God has allowed us to relocate to the countryside, remember the mission is in the city. Let's live. Let's end by talking about the fourth point is let's live the life of Elijah. How did Elijah live? Inspiration says among the mountains of Gilead east of Jordan, they dwelt in the days of Ahab, a man of faith and prayer whose fearless ministry was destined to check the rapid spread of apostates in Israel. He was far removed living in the mountains, but his mission was in the city. Brothers and sisters, our mission is in the city. Our mission is where people are living. Our mission is where people are residing. Yes, in the countryside they are there, in the cities are there. So you do not run away from people. 
when we have gone to be trained, we come back to share the gospel. It is in the sharing of the gospel that we are empowered. It is in the sharing of the gospel that we receive the letter rain. It is in the sharing of the gospel that our lives are changed. Therefore, brothers and sisters, whatever is happening in the world, the man of sin is busy putting everything in place, but the children of God are busy preaching and living the gospel. Let's work until Jesus returns. This is the only reason why we are surviving today. We live for mission. Therefore, let mission be our goal in whatever we are doing. Until then, brothers and sisters, let the Spirit of the Lord work with us, in us, through us, to fulfill that which he has called us for today. Remember, we have nothing to fear for the future unless we have forgotten the way how God has led led us in the past and when the conditions become difficult in the world this is when we test the goodness of god and the power of god so the children of god while their eyes are on the current events their eyes and their strength is also in the preaching of the gospel because what will make this world to end is not the implement the declaration of the mark of the beast or the change of the laws what will make this world to end is the preaching of the everlasting gospel and this gospel of the truth shall be preached unto all the world as a testimony and then the end will come therefore let me end by asking you this question how are you involved in the preaching of the gospel what projects are you doing in the preaching of the gospel what plans do you have in the preaching of the gospel for we have been called to represent God. While we can be watching whatever is happening, the main task is to seek and to save the lost. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, things are changing very quickly. You said the events of the last days will be rapid ones. But blessed are we if we can practically live what the truth have said prayerfully and practically live the truth above all lord you have called us to be your witnesses empower us lord to be your faithful witnesses wherever you go wherever we are and wherever we go to live according to the truth that you have revealed bless us lord as we prepare for the sabbath or as we are already in the sabbath in jesus name amen until then, my brothers and sisters, may the Lord truly bless you. I look forward to see you in the next edition. May the Lord continue to bless you, continue to pray for us as we seek to deliver the truth as God reveals to us. And one day, soon and very soon, Christ will return to take us home. God bless.